Hi everyone and welcome to this training session on the Siemens Physical Model products for the Arctic Ocean. My name is Simon Boitard and I work at Novelties in Toulouse, France. I will be your trainer for this course that will take place in the Jupyter Notebook environment. Before starting, there are two things you need to know about the Jupyter Notebook environment. To execute a code cell, hit the play button here or use the keyboard shortcut shift enter. If for any reason the kernel is not working anymore, in the top menu, hit the refresh button. Then hit run and run all above selected cell. So let's start this practical course on the seasonal variations of the physical parameters in the Arctic Ocean. First, I will give you an introduction on the physical parameters in the Arctic Ocean. I will then present you the products that we will use and the required Python mod modules. Then we will together explore the CMEMS file content that are delivered as NetCDF files. And I will show you different ways of visualizing and manipulating the variables inside the products, like mapping the data at given dates, comparing the C I states uh, between two years, how to plot horizontal time series, and how to plot vertical profiles. So, the maritime commercial companies used to avoid the Arctic Ocean for shipping and tourism, as sea ice was covering the area most of the time. With the Arctic war warming twice as fast as the rest of the world, the sea ice coverage at the North Pole decreases regularly every year and has been plummeting for the past decades. Even if this phenomenon is dramatic for the species living there and contributes to the general sea level rise already impacting different regions of the world, it has opened new economical opportunities. More and more ships are now able to cross the Arctic Ocean. The region presents a great potential to contribute to the international maritime transport. In particular, the Northeast Polar Passage would provide China with a faster access to the European harbors by saving almost 20 days of navigation compared to the traditional Suez Canal route. The objective of this notebook is to use the CMEMS physical products to explore different parameters on the sea ice states, like sea ice fraction and thickness and water temperature and salinity, to report on climate change. Moreover, we will conduct a long-term CI state analysis on the new maritime roads in the Arctic. In this notebook, you will learn to handle and explore the CMEMS products delivered as NetCDF files, to map CI thickness at particular dates, to compute monthly means of CI parameters and plot them, to plot horizontal time series of CI state parameters, and to plot vertical time series. So what products are we going to use in this training? We are going to work with the Arctic Ocean Physics Reanalysis products. This table sums up the main characteristics of the products. So here you can visualize the geographical coverage of the product, which is the entire Arctic Ocean. Uh, here is a list of uh, the variables that are available in the product. The spatial resolution of 12.5 kilometers square, about one half of a degree. The coordinate reference system, the projection used in the product, the temporal coverage as well, and the temporal resolution. 
If you want to learn more about the product, I invite you um, to visit the dedicated product page on the Copernicus Siemens web, web portal. Uh, detailed information about the products are, is also available in the product user manual and in the quality information document. The products that we are going to use throughout the notebook have been downloading ahead of the training session and are stored in the data folder. But where is this folder? Let's explore the architecture of the repository. So here is the notebook we are working on. Here is the input data folder with all the input data that we're going to use. Here is a doc folder with the product user manuals and the quality information document. And here is the repository where the figures we are going to generate will be saved. For now, it's empty because we haven't generated any figure yet. So let's go back to the notebook. If you wish to download more data yourself or re-download this data, please be sure to have CMEMS user credentials. Otherwise, you can get them following this link. Moreover, you will find below the parameters used to download each data set from the CMEMS portal. The first two data sets have monthly means of the CI state parameters for the year 1992 and the year 2019 for each month. The three last products contain monthly means from 1991 to 2019 on one particular point. And the coordinates are described here. If you need guidance about the different services for downloading CMEMS products, I invite you to check the dedicated tutorial. So let's start with the practical session. The first thing that one needs to do before working with uh, Jupyter Notebooks or Python in general is to set up the environment with all the necessary tools. Um, because in, in Python, the libraries you work with need to be imported first. In this notebook, we are going to work with five main libraries. The operating system interfaces, which manages path and allows to create directories. The NumPy library, which allows carrying out scientific computing with Python, the XRA libraries to handle NetCDF and CMEMS products in an intuitive and interactive way, the matplotlib library, which is a Python numerical plotting library, and the basemap toolkit for uh, plotting 2D data on map background. So the first cell um, we are going to work with will be the cell uh, for importing the libraries. To import a library, use the keyword import and then the name of the library you want to import. You can also import some libraries with a namespace, the library's nickname. So for example, when importing NumPy as NP, when working with an NumPy function, we will call it with the NP dot function. So let's execute this cell with the shift enter keyboard shortcut. So you can see that all the libraries have been properly imported. 
no error shows. Um, the requested Python libraries that we are using in this notebook have been installed on the CMEMS Jupyter Hub ahead of this training session. Hence, no installation is needed during the session. However, if you wish to replay this notebook later on on your own infrastructure, you may need to check your Python version and install the required Python libraries for this notebook. The following part gives you hints on setting up the appropriate environment for this notebook to run smoothly. First, you need to have a Python version greater than 3.7. This command line helps you checking the Python version installed on your working environment. Here we are working with the 3.7.3 Python version. If you need to install a Python version, you can use the conda install command. And then if you are using the standard Anaconda 3 installation, you can install the needed modules by executing the following command in a new cell. Now that our notebook is set up with all the appropriate libraries, let's explore the netcdf file content. In this part, we are going to work with the monthly dataset of the reanalysis product over the Arctic Ocean. We are going to use this file to get started with Python features. As a reminder, this dataset is the one which contains the monthly means for the year 2019. So first, we will define the root path, the path pointing to the data directory, and the fname variable, the path pointing to the netcdf file, root path plus file name. Of course, you are free to change the name of these variables according to your needs and your preferences. Now that we have told Jupyter which data we are going to work with and where it is, we need to open this data. The following cell uses the open dataset function from the XRA library and allows you to interactively browse the content of the file. So here you can check the dimension of the product, 12 depth, 12 time frames, X and Y. Let's check the time dimension. Hitting this button will show, will uh, display more information on the variable. You can see that the products contain values for each month in 2019, January, February, and so on. Here, you can check the variables of interest in the product. For example, the sea ice fraction or the sea ice sorry, the sea ice um, thickness and explore, explore them. You can also check the general attributes of the product, like the institution, the source, the title, etc. Now, if you want to file, if you want to store the file content into an XRA dataset called FIN, for example, and print the content of the dataset, you can execute the following cell. This cell uses the open dataset function to open the CMEMS product and returns an XRA dataset called FIN. And then we display general information about the XRA dataset. So here you see the same kind of information that are displayed here. So as I uh, told you earlier, CMEMS products are delivered as NetCDF file. 
An ATDF file is a common way of storing scientific data. It contains the dimensions of the data, several variables, depending on one or more of these dimensions, and general information about the product, the global attributes. For example, if you want to store one attribute via value in a variable, here the institution can use this line of code and then print the variable content. If you want to display only the data variables within the products, you can use the dataverse attribute. Now, if you want to display the coordinates, you can use the coords attribute. Same for the dimensions. If you want to store the values of a variable in an array, you just have to type my array equals fn.variable.values. Let's switch for the time variable. If you want to check the content of uh, the array, you just field. Type print my array. For time, we can see the same dates that we have displayed earlier. Another way of displaying raw information about NetCDF file is to use the, NC, the Linux ncdump command. When calling a Linux command from a notebook, you have to insert an exclamation point at the beginning of the command line. Here you can see that the ncdump um, command line displays the same kind of information as the X-Array information. A difference worth to be noted is that in the analysis products over the Arctic Ocean, the command line shows that the time variable is stored as hour since January the 1st, 1950. This unit, this unit is not easily readable by a human, and the XR, XR open dataset function conveniently interprets the time coordinate as a date when ingesting the product. Now that we have discovered various ways of exploring CMEMS products, let's move on to um, plotting the variables inside the product. The variables of interest in the studied dataset are geographical variables. This exercise will show you how to map the sea ice thickness in winter and summer. In this exercise, we will have a closer look at the sea ice thickness and fractional uh, ice coverage. We need to define the name of the variable of interest in the NetCDF file. Here, var name h ice for the sea ice thickness variable, var name f ice for the sea ice fraction variable, var name salinity for the seawater salinity, and var name temperature for the water temperature. Here, we define again the root path and the file name. Be aware that this is not necessary as we have already defined it earlier. Uh, and uh, the, Jupyter, the Jupyter Hub environment remembers it. However, we do the operation again here. If later you want to practice the product at uh, the notebook again, and uh, directly jump to this exercise. And you don't have to execute all the precedent cells on exploring the product. Now we open the dataset and store the content in fin. And so here we see that the same content as earlier is displayed because we're working on the same dataset. Now we define the variable names we are going to work with. So here, h ice, f ice, 
salinity and temperature. Now, this cell, um, well, uh, in order to plot the variables of interest, we will need the time coordinate, but also the latitude and longitude coordinates and variables. This is the purpose of the following cell. We get the var hi's coordinate by saying that we only want the hi's variable from the fin um, x-ray data set. Same for fi's salinity temperature. And then we get the latitude, longitude, and time variables. Finally, when we have gotten all the needed variables, we close the open dataset to spare memory. As previously shown, the dataset contains CI state parameters for the whole 2019 year. In this exercise, we will plot the variable of interest for March 2019 and August 2019. You can try plotting different dates after the exercise if you want, of course. First, we are going to tailor the data that we want to plot. So first, we need to define the variable of interest and the dates to plot with a format compatible with the time variable. Then, the cell function of X-Array selects the nearest dates to date plot 1 and date plot 2. So this cell allows you to choose the variable of interest to plot. By uncommenting uh, and by deleting the hash character at the beginning of a line, you can select the variable of interest and by commenting the other one, you can unselect the data that you're not interested in. So here, we will first work with the ice fraction, for example. We define the two dates uh, that we are interested in. So, for example, March 15, 2019 and August 18, 2019. Then, with the cell function, we extract the closest date in the dataset to the date we have defined, and we print the selected date to plot. And here, we can see that we have selected the variable for March 15, 2019 and August 15, 2019, which is the closest date in the product to August 18, 2019. So var date 1 and var date 2 now respectively only contain the var name variable for the selected date plot 1 and date plot 2 dates. If you want to select a date that is not in the dataset, then the cell function of X-Array selects the nearest date in the data array. You can also note that the var name variable does not depend on the time dimension anymore. As there was only one remaining date per dataset, the cell method automatically removed the time dependency of the var name variable. As we saw earlier, the open dataset function interprets the time variable as a date. The precision of this date, nanosecond here, is too high as we are looking up monthly average values. It would be more practical to work with a date limited to um, a, a day value. To do so, we can use the istype function. And we will use the day time unit here. 
be aware that you can also use other units according to your application, like years, months, weeks, etc. So here, just as an example, we store the we apply the is type function to the time value of var date one, and we print the difference between the native var date one format and the reshaped format after is type. And we do the same operation for day two. And you can see here we got rid of the useless part of the date. Let's now finally generate our first map. Plot the data. We will use the subplot function for both date for plotting both dates on the same figure with one subplot per date. A subplot is called an axe, and each axe property can be defined independently. For plotting over the Arctic, we'll use the base map and steer projection, which is the North Polar Stereographic Projection. It corresponds to the stereographic projection used in the product. We'll also need to define the following parameters. The center of the desired map domain, the X on which to create the base map instance, the bounding latitude, and the resolution. Later, you can play around with these parameters and see how they affect the map generation. We will plot the variable of interest by using the p color mesh function, which creates a pseudo color plot with a rectangular grid. Let's check it in details. First, we create one figure containing two axes, x1 and x2, thanks to the subplots function. There will be one row and two columns. So both axes will be on one row and two columns. Then, for the first date, we create a base map instance called M with the North Polar Stereographic Projection, centered longitude, the bounding latitude, and the X on which we want to create this map. Here, X1, so the left X. We add some feature to the map, like the coastlines, the countries, the meridians, and the parallels. On this map, we will plot sea ice um, thickness on the longitude and the latitude grid for date one in March. We add the color bar and a title. Then we do the same, we apply the same steps to August 2019. But the base map will be created on X2. And we will use for day two. Eventually, we save our figure. Let's generate the plot. Here, we can see that our plot was saved in the out directory. Let's go check to be sure. can see the map was properly saved here. And here we just um, displayed the sea ice fraction for March 2019 and August 2019. You can see that there is a high seasonal variability, in the sea ice fraction for both months. You can, of course, repeat the exercise for the sea ice thickness by commenting this line and uncommenting this one.
and then execute the following cell to the plot. So we just generated two maps of CIS parameter for March and August 2019. Both maps highlight the variability of the CIS extent over the year. Indeed, in 2019, the sea ice extent in the Arctic reached its peak of 14.78 million kilometers square in March 2019, against a minimum of 4.15 million kilometers square in September 2019. However, the 2019 maximum sea ice extent is weak compared to former years. According to the data of NSIDC, the 13 lowest Arctic sea ice expansions since 1979 have all occurred over the past 13 years. 2020 is not included because the data was not available during the preparation of this notebook. Now let's compare the sea ice state parameters between 1992 and 2019. As previously said, the sea ice extent in the North Pole has plummeted for the past decades. We are now going to visualize this phenomenon by mapping different sea ice parameters, sea ice fraction or thickness, and water temperature between years 1992 and 2019. So first, we need to select the NetCTF file and variable name. Again, we define root path. And the file name containing the data for 1992 and the one containing the data for 2019, which is the one we worked with in the previous exercise. Define the, right, the name of the variables of interest. And we open both data sets. Then, as earlier, we store the variable of interest in individual arrays for both years. And we close the data sets to spare memory. Now to generate, show and save the plots. This cell allows you to choose your variable of interest, as in the previous exercise. Here, we will um, begin with the sea ice thickness. So we define the variable for 1992, 2019, define the var name to generate the plot and the min values and max values also to generate the plot. And now we're going to uh, map the monthly evolution of the sea ice thickness during years uh, 1992 and 2019. We are going to generate 24 monthly maps, 12 for each year, on one figure. For this, we are going to create a figure with 24 subplots on 12 rows and 2 columns. To automate the generation and avoid writing 24 times the same code to create similar maps, we create a for loop on the month. Okay, so we create one figure with 24 axes with the subplot function. Then we convert the axes to a flattened 1D array to be able to loop on them. We create a for loop on the month. And then we just have to select the date corresponding to the current month, create a base map for year 1992. They will be displayed on the, on the axis with an even number, so the left column. We add features to the base map and we plot the variable for year 1992 for the current month. Then we do the same for the year 2019, except that it will be plotted on axes with odd indices, so the right column. 
eventually we save the figure. So let's execute the cell. It may take some time to generate the figure because it's generating 24 plots, saving them and also and uh, also displaying them. When the plot is generated, you can compare month by month the sea ice thickness between 1992 and 2019. January, February, March, and so on until December. Of course, if you want to do the analysis for a different, um, a different parameter, think of switching the variables of interest in section 3, 6.3.1. So here we have generated monthly maps showing the evolution of different physical parameters between years 1992 and 2019. When you plot the water temperature, you will see that it clearly highlights a warming of the Arctic Ocean in 27 years. This warming greatly impacts the sea ice state at the North Pole. When you plot the sea ice coverage, you'll see that, it's, that it has significantly uh, reduced in summer 2019 compared to summer 1992, when it is about the same in the winter of both years. However, the plot we just generated shows that the sea ice has lost several meters of thickness in 27 years. And this is a long term and not a seasonal effect, as the maps show us that the sea ice thickness does not fully recover during the winter month in 2019 compared to 1992. Here you see that in December, sea ice is much thicker than in 2019. For now, the sea ice extent remains about the same in the winter, even though it drastically reduces in the summer. But the sea ice gets thinner and thinner as time goes by. Now, let's move on to plotting horizontal time series. So checking the global evolution of the sea ice thickness and extent in 1992 and 2019 made us realize that the Arctic Ocean is warming up and the sea ice extent there is greatly reducing. This opens new opportunities for shipping, especially in the summer, when the area covered by sea ice is at its minimum. And this minimum is getting smaller from one year to another. In this part, we are going to focus on three particular points on the new maritime Arctic route along the Russian north coast. On these locations, we are going to monitor the time series evolution of physical parameters like sea thickness and fractional area, water temperature and salinity from 1992 to 2019. You can display the positions of the three chosen points by executing the cell below. If you want to change the longitude and latitude of the chosen points later on, remember that you will need to download the appropriate file from the CMEMS portal first. Because in, for this training, we have downloaded ahead of the training the file corresponding to the, two def, to the three defined points here. But for other points, you'll need to download the data. So here we display the points just by ge generating a figure with one axe. A base map instance and we just plot the longitude and the latitude of the points with um, filled black dots and we add feature on the map so here you can see the positions of the three points So this cell allows you to choose 
the points you want to work with. Here we will work with the point 2, but later you can do the analysis again for point 1 and point 3. Here we get the variable of interest, we open the data set, and we create an output directory to save the plot, in case it does not exist. As usual, we get the variable, the variables of interest, and we close the data set to spare memory. Now we're going to generate one plot per variable of interest. CI fraction, CI thickness, sea water temperature and salinity. We store here the physical parameters characteristics in arrays to create a loop later on. So here, first variable, CI's fraction, define the title and the name to generate the plot and be able to loop on the variables. Same for the ice thickness and for the sea water, for the sea water temperature and salinity. Here, as it is a 3D array, we only keep the surface temperature. So the first in this. Then we store the variables characteristics into arrays to loop on them later on. Again, we use the subplot function to plot each variable on the same figure with one subplot per, fi per figure, and we save the figure. So here, you can see the CI's fraction evolution between 1992 and 2020 for point 1, the CI's thickness evolution, water temperature, and salinity evolution. You can of course generate the figures for other point location by switching the file name in section 7.1 and executing the cell down to the plot. So the figures we just generated show different trends according to the point's location. When you plot, when you generate the plot for point 1, you'll see that it never experiences sea highs and shows regular seasonal water temperature and salinity variations. Point 2, however, is covered in ice every winter, but the more recent the year, the longer it is free of ice. The sea ice thickness there also decreases every year. Here, you can see. While the water surface temperature rises almost 4 degrees of difference between summer 1991 and 2016. Here and here. When you plot point 3, even though longer covered by ice over the years, it shows the same trend as point 2. The sea ice thickness has been decreasing and the water surface temperature has been drastically rising. So these time series confirm the trends identified by comparing sea ice coverage and thickness between 1992 and 2019 in the last section. This recession of the sea ice extent causes a growing interest for the maritime exploitation of the Arctic Ocean. Now, the last part of this tutorial, the vertical profiles exercises. In this part, we keep focusing on the same three points and we will have a closer look at the vertical evolution of water temperature and salinity. We will display vertical profiles during March and August. This time we'll be working with dataset corresponding to point 3. As usual, we store the variable of interest and we close the dataset to spare memory. Here, so this cell, as usual, allows you to choose the variable of interest to plot. Here we'll, we'll have a look at the temperature profile. Now, out of all the dates in the product for 27 dates, 
we will uh, select March nine, March and August nineteen ninety two, and March and August twenty nineteen. And we generate uh, the vertical profile. In green, it will be the vertical profile, the temperature vertical profile for 0.3 in 1992, and in blue for 2019. So here we just uh, we just generate a basic 2D plot for var date one along the depth and we do it four time for March nineteen ninety two and March twenty nineteen course this on the same figure same X and here for August on the same X and we save the figure. And see the evolution of the vertical profile and the difference of the vertical profile between March 1992 and 2019 and August 1992 and 2019. So the figures show the vertical profile of the temperature and the salinity for three points in March and August and different behaviors can be noticed depending on the considered point. I will uh, let you generate the temperature and salinity vertical profiles for all points, and then you can uh, see the information you can uh, deduce from uh, the plotted vertical profile. So congratulations, this part of the training is over and thank you for your interest and, at and attention. We hope you enjoyed this training uh, session on the Arctic physical model data provided by Siemens. Now let's try to download new data and variables and to access and visualize them. You can try to make new maps and plots and don't forget to try the other CMMs are